Hi, I'm Mike Massey and you're watching Shock Hood Journal. I grew up in a community that had an air base. I mean, that's what it was built for. It was built for an American military base. But the thing was, is uh, even back then, uh, I had a lot of exposure to people from different countries because of the military. And, you know, you, you get to talk about a lot of things. I didn't grow, unfortunately, I can remember one year, mom had to go to Montreal to have an air operation. It was 69 or 70, something like that. But it was when the groovy art was on the go, like that, you know, all that really cool stuff was on the go. And I was just, that was the first time I've ever seen it. And I was always intrigued by art at that age. I, it was something I was, like I used to say, can we, can we go in here, can we go in here? But up home, art was not something that was talked about. Crafts, yes, a lot of crafts, like uh, clothes making, like slippers, mitts parkas, a lot of embroidery, you know, different things like that. And when I was 15, uh, I had a job for the summer uh, working at a craft shop with my mother. And so, well, she knew all the craft producers at home, but she really honed in on the best ones because mom was a perfectionist. And I get a lot of my very pickiness, if you want to call it that, from her. So anyway, I tried a few little things, nothing serious. I wasn't really doing much art. I would, in high school, before I went to art school, um, besides doing the drama, uh, comic books. I was big into comic books. And even when I was young, I remember, uh, well, what I, in high school, I used to take like uh, Conan or Spider-Man or Thor or whatever it was, and I would put the, mag the, the, car the comic book on one side and I'd have my, drawing paper and my pencils and everything on the other side and I would look and try and copy exactly what I saw. Even then when I was doing my drawings if I got so far and I didn't like it I would tear it up and throw it away and restart and it was just something I wanted myself to be was to be always whenever I did something like that I want to be my best and I wasn't going to put it out there unless it was and this is still the same way I am now when I do my work. Field, they're spaced out but when they work hard they're all jammed right tight together. And that's what makes it hard. That's what uh, we call work hard. If you push that work hardening too much, you're gonna crack it. And I've had it happen once in my life and I made sure I'll never do it again. It's not a pretty thing. Well, it's, this it's Attica hard. Festival, I know I'm not pronouncing that right. It's, it's quite interesting because like uh, I didn't realize like the uh, Sami artists that are there uh, the kind of work they did. I've seen it in books and stuff, but to actually see it in person and talk to the artists that do it and to find out, you know, about the stories. But to actually uh, be able to sit down with the artists one-on-one -on -one and talk about their work and what it means and stuff is, is, is just great. You know, I mean, you're getting to see uh, the guys from uh, the Sami artists, they're doing these little miniature carvings. And then in the next booth, you got a guy from here in uh, uh, Whitehorse and he's making knives. But then you have like uh, slippers and mitts and hats. And I mean, it, it's a lot like home. To see that, it's like being back home again. It's, these festivals are just a great thing because you're able to meet up with other artists and talk art all day long if you want. And for me, that's just like a thrill because I'm usually stuck in my studio working, you know, uh, seven days a week kind of thing. Is you make your circles around. I got you gotta do it slow with this compass anyway. You just go all the way around like that and you keep going. Make it bigger. Yeah, until the next one is a little bigger. It only needs to be that far. Talk about my artwork. Uh, I I I'm a silversmith by that's what I 
graduated with, with the uh, uh, thought of being a silversmith and still doing it. And then I picked up carving on, you know, because of uh, an incident that happened and it turned out to be great. But uh, I look at the both mediums totally different. Uh, here you have stone. It's a three-dimensional object right away. Because it's a three-dimensional object, I want a person, when they're looking at my work, to be able to walk around 360 degrees and there's something all the way around. And so when I'm looking at it, I'll always, 95% of the time, I only have a front idea. Once I take away what's not needed for the design that I have, uh, what's left on the back side, then I start looking at the back to see what kind of story, or if I have a story in mind, what else from that story that I can incorporate on the back side that kind of molds into the front and kind of blends in with it and everything. With silver work, my teapots, um, the work, because it's a three-dimensional object, or two-dimensional object is a flat piece of silver, I have to think differently about it. I usually just draw a profile of it, and this is what I want to make. And then a lot of times I'll end up making mold. Early, in, early when I started, I used to make paper molds, uh, maquettes, because if you start just cutting things out and then you try to put them together, and they're not gonna, you're going to waste a lot of metal and all this kind of stuff. So making the maquette is a way of uh, not making that mistake of you know, making something and then it's not going to fit together. You know it's going to fit together because you just made it out of paper. It was a total different thing to make teapots. Just, it just threw everybody off. And uh, I, was, I was all up for that. I like being different. Even when I was young, I wanted to be different. 